Hi, Dr. Kondo. Hello. Great to see you again. I want to start with a general question. What made you think that you want to join Endo Global and be one of the founding members of Endo Global? Well, in fact, uh, it was an initiative from the people from Tijuana. And uh, we have very good friends who are uh, Jorge, uh, Fabian, and they had this uh, project in order to try to uh, build a center, um, an expertise center on endometriosis in Tijuana because of the localization of the city and all the, uh, the things uh, around the uh, medical <coughs> uh, pe people coming from US and Canada looking for uh, uh, medical care. And uh, at the beginning, we thought it was a very, very good idea because we had already people very well trained on IVF, on, uh, on surgical oncology, and the only remaining problem was uh, the team of gynecology and imaging exams. So we just talked with uh, our radiologist team and some other friends who are gynecologists, and we could, at the end, build this group in order to try to start uh, the attention for, uh, to, to the patients with endometriosis. And uh, we started this project like uh, three or four years ago, <clears throat> just us uh, looking uh, the patients from the group of uh, reproduction and uh, coming every three or four, four months in order to try to do surgeries. Also, uh, starting with the, the preparative investigation in order to, to have the, the, the good uh, imaging exam and also a preoperative diagnosis with Carlos, our radiologist. And this, uh, at the end, got uh, a little bit bigger. And uh, at the end, we invited some other colleagues uh, to participate in this uh, very interesting project. That's amazing. So one of the most important facts uh, for me was mo every surgeon in your team in Endo Global, the gynecologist, excision surgeons are, are video vetted, uh, which is the approval of the skills. However, I want to ask a question. So you had a good, um, there are multiple surgeons around this area in San Diego, in Tijuana. What's unique about Endo Global? Uh, what do you think is the unique value of Endo Global that it's hard to beat for any other group in the world? <clears throat> I think um, the attention to patients uh, of uh, endometriosis starts with a very good uh, uh, clinical evaluation. And then right after that, uh, it's very important to have uh, a good uh, imaging exam in order to define the extension of the disease and what, what type of the disease uh, the patient has. And this, we have been working for the last 15 years in our city. So we have quite a good experience uh, in this area. And afterwards, once we have the good diagnosis and we know exactly the extension of the disease, of course, we can put together symptoms uh, and also image exams in order to try to define the best uh, solution for the symptoms. Uh, it doesn't matter if it's uh, pain or if the patient is just concerned about the disease or, or she's seeking for fertility because we have very good uh, professionals in each area. If she needs, uh, for example, a fertility uh, treatment and the surgery is not the best solution for her fertility problem, we just uh, send the, the send the patient to the IVF guys, and they, they could they can manage the situation. If the surgery is the best solution, probably for the pain, and she didn't have a very good uh, response to clinical treatment, probably we're gonna indicate surgery. So we try to individualize it, each case, and having all the information, of course, it's easier uh, for us to to have the final decision. Awesome. So, you know, since we started I Care Better, uh, I work with a lot of great surgeons, and uh, great surgeons have a multidisciplinary team, which is uh, usually uh, 
It includes general surgeon, urologists, colorectal surgeon, if needed, thoracic surgeons. So now a lot of great teams in the world have this group of multidisciplinary care. What stood out to me about Endo Global was having the IVF team and the imager, the, the radiologist, to be a member of the team. So that shows like how you think about things, which brings me to my next questions about how imaging helps you. So I realized you are taking this very unique approach to surgery, and you have a very extensive preoperative assessment, imaging, mapping of the disease using MRI and MRI protocol. Can you explain how that helps you and how you use that as a surgeon in the operating room? Yeah, sure. <clears throat> it's very important because we can discuss with the patient exactly the disease uh, she has and also talk about, speak about uh, complications and uh, give her the best information on uh, her uh, disease. Um, this allows us to define the multidisciplinary team uh, specific for that specific surgery. And of course, sometimes we do have the team inside the OR Sometimes it's not necessary, but at least in our, in our city, <clears throat> what we could uh, try to do uh, during these uh, last 10, 15 years is to uh, train and uh, our, our own skills in different specialties. Uh, of course, we have the specialist in each area that can help us for specific situations, for example, if you have a di diaphragmatic uh, disease, we usually operate uh, transabdominally and the thoracic surgeon goes uh, through the thorax. The urologist, whenever we have, uh, for example, a ureteral <coughs> disease and um, ureteral implantation is required, uh, most of the times the urologist performs this uh, for us. But also we are able to perform this type of surgeries uh, by ourselves if uh, they are not uh, present. So with the uh, years of uh, experience, we could develop uh, our, our own skills. And it's very important for us to have the preoperative uh, imaging exams uh, to define uh, time of surgery, risks of the surgical procedure, type of preparation for this specific uh, surgical procedure, try to uh, know uh, time of recovery, uh, time of hospitalization. This, with this information, we can give the patient the more accurate uh, uh, knowledge about the surgery and the post-op uh, recovery. That's very interesting and that's amazing. So it's obviously you have been uh, accustomed to, and you are used to having mapping before surgery, so you go fully planned. And uh, Mike Tyson is a perfect, is a great boxer, and he's retired now. He says, "You go in the ring with a plan until you get punched in the face for the first time. But you need to have a plan to go in, and then you get punched. Then plans can change, but you need to have the plan." That I, with that, I want to go about the case yesterday that you operated on here in Endo Global Center in Tijuana. <laughs> And the case took about eight hours, I think, even more than that. It was, in my opinion, one of the most difficult cases that I've heard of. And uh, you were the chief surgeon running. Can you explain like, why a surgery of endometriosis can take eight hours? I would say a standard surgeon probably would go in and out for one <coughs> hour, but it took eight hours. Uh, why, it, why, why it takes eight hours and like, what are the considerations that you have which makes you do such a long surgery to, like, what's your thought process during such <clears throat> surgeries? Yeah. <clears throat> the main thing is the surgical team, but in this sense, we cannot uh, say anything because I, I was operating with my partner from Curitiba, so we are used to do this kind of surgical procedures in shorter time. But uh, the case of yesterday was a little bit different Probably it was not just uh, endometriosis. She had a different fibrotic tissue at the retroperitoneal uh, area. And uh, it was very difficult to, to reach the uh, healthy tissue. 
So in this way, uh, we took our uh, surgical procedures for uh, deep endo with the bowel excision. Usually takes between one hour and a half up to three hours. Uh, it's very rare that we that we have uh, sur surgeries uh, longer than three or four hours. So this case were very uh, specific one, uh, but I think uh, the type of presentation and also the fibrotic reaction that I personally think uh, it was not only endometriosis because usually endometriosis do doesn't do this kind of uh, reaction. I think it's a mix of uh, endometriosis and uh, multiple infections uh, on the tissue, uh, changing a lot the tissue. And that brought us uh, very difficult uh, difficulties to, to find the exact uh, cleavage plane and the, the healthy tissue uh, mainly. Mm -hmm. What's your expectation for this patient? Do you think she's gonna feel like um, better in how many weeks after the surgery? <clears throat> Usually for big surgical procedures, if the recovery is uh, as we are planning, it's going to be. It doesn't matter if it's a small surgery or a big surgery, if the patient has no complications, usually the time of recovery is almost the same. So between five to 10, 15 days, most of the patients are very well. Uh, depends on the type of surgery itself, but uh, for example, if you do a bowel surgery, the most important days mm -hmm. are the first uh, five to seven days. If the patient passed these initial days and there is no major complication, it's very difficult that she doesn't recover in less than two or three weeks. Uh, so depending on the surgery, it changes, of mm -hmm. course. If you do a vaginal excision, mm -hmm. you need to uh, uh, avoid the sexual intercourse mm -hmm. for uh, eight weeks mm -hmm. uh, or nine weeks. If you do hysterectomy, the same. If you do a bladder excision, you need a uh, uh, bladder catheter for one or two weeks. So it depends of, on the procedure. But in general, the general uh, recovery usually takes not more than uh, 10 to 15 days, even in these big cases. For example, <clears throat> in our uh, service, which is a private one in Curitiba, we used to uh, keep the patients uh, hospitalized just one day for uh, segmental bowel excisions, mm. and 99% of the patients are able to go to go out uh, to their houses uh, in the next day after surgery. So, so I wanna combine my last two questions uh, because, so one thing that I think was surprising yesterday was when you opened the patient, um, no one was expecting it to be eight hours. I would, I believe you didn't also expect it to be such an extensive case. And you had the mapping done before, at least maybe a little bit before the surgery. Uh, that's also bring me to the point that Mark Tyson said, you go with the plan until you get punched in the face. Um, so what, what's your feeling when you go and see things are like different or are worse than you saw in the imaging and the mapping? Like what takes you, like how you make decisions there I know it comes from experience. I am really curious myself. Like how, like how do you react to such cases that you didn't expect this to be this extensive or this complex? Yeah, this is the nice and the bad things on endometriosis because even if you have a very good imaging exams, sometimes you miss some lesions or the imaging that the radiologist has is not exactly what we have during surgery. It's very rare when you have a good imaging examiner, but it's quite common if the sonographer or the radiologist is starting uh, with the technique of uh, preoperative ma mapping for endometriosis. So we face this, at least in our center, uh, more when patients come from other cities and have the imaging exam not performed by, by our radiologists. Uh, of course, with the experience, we can manage different situations. And this is important because sometimes 
uh, <clears throat> you think that the surgery is going to be quite easy and you take more time. That's why it's very important to be in a good center, to have the adequate instruments, to have an experienced uh, surgeon, because even small cases can become hard cases uh, when you enter uh, the abdomen, especially speaking about uh, endometriosis. So it's important for the surgeons and for the patients uh, to realize that it's not an easy disease to manage and sometimes we can face uh, different situations and uh, more uh, exhaustive and difficult surgeries. Great. I'm going to ask you a question now, and I want to hear, what's your feeling about endometriosis? When you hear the word, what, what do you feel? <clears throat> In fact, I think uh, it's a very difficult disease, but uh, it's difficult in different aspects. Uh, sometimes it's difficult because uh, patients arrive to us uh, years later than they should arrive. So these cases are difficult because they suffer and they have chronic symptoms that are not, not easy to treat. Uh, it's also difficult because it's a disease which is uh, difficult to diagnose because uh, clinicians sometimes doesn't know about the disease. Radiologists are not uh, able to do diagnosis. Uh, but whenever we can diagnose the patient properly and give her a good assistance, most of them, I would tell, more than 90%, we can uh, give them a very, very good uh, quality of life. And we uh, keep them on very, very little uh, symptoms. Uh, it doesn't matter if she requires or not surgery because not, not, not all cases require surgery. Some of the patients we can manage just with clinical treatment. And uh, I would say, at least in our city, in our center, that uh, less than 5% of the patients we cannot manage, we cannot operate, or we operate and uh, the patient keep uh, symptomatology. So it's very difficult if we have a good diagnosis, uh, especially if it's a very early diagnosis that we cannot uh, manage well uh, the disease. So uh, the main problem of the disease is to have a late diagnosis or a misdiagnosis. In this way, a patient has a chronic uh, pain in this way, she has uh, multiple previous surgeries, and this is very bad for, uh, for the out outcome uh, of the treatment. Does it make it harder if you <clears throat> get a patient after multiple surgeries compared to if she comes to you for the first surgery? Yeah, sure, because <clears throat> whenever you have uh, multiple surgeries, we have a lot of problems. First, sometimes all the uh, spaces that are the, uh, the cleavage plane from the normal tissue and the diseased tissue, uh, we don't, don't have uh, any more this separation. And uh, you have a mix of uh, healing, which carries, uh, which, uh, uh, carries uh, some degree of fibrosis. You have fibrosis of the disease, you have fibrosis of the healing, and at the end, you don't know anymore uh, if it's disease or not disease. So that's why it's very important uh, whenever we have the correct diagnosis that you do uh, a good surgery. In this way, you know that you treat all the disease that was there. And um, probably if she has some uh, scar or some fibrotic tissue in the imaging exams in the first years after surgery, of course, disease due to uh, surgical healing, not uh, disease, uh, because the worst thing is to operate a very uh, a multiple uh, operated patient with a lot of fibrosis, and then you took uh, you take all the fibrosis, and uh, during the pathological examination, it comes just fibrosis, no endometriosis, uh, and sometimes you perform an extensive surgery, extensive dissection, you you dissecate a lot of uh, nerves and the patient sometimes can have some complications, functional or non-functional, 
but uh, at the end sometimes there is no more disease just fibrosis and uh, it's not uh, due to endometriosis due to previous surgeries that's why it's difficult to operate uh, multiple uh, operated patients <coughs> great thank you so much i know you have done a lot these days so thank you very much for your time and i really appreciate the thank interview thank you very much thank you great.